right, let me introduce you to the cast and crew here and the director of the movie, Julio Quintana. Introduction, she's Marie. <laughs> Christian Gallegos from Houston himself. <laughs> and Paulina Chavez, also from Texas. <laughs> All right, so our, our time is limited, so I'm gonna try to make this quick. We'll jump right into it, guys. What drew you to this film? Julio, we can start with you. What drew you to this film? A film about five Mexican-American teenage cats in South Texas. Yeah, there's money, lots, lots of money. No, there's, there's no money. There's, there's money. Uh, well, it was actually it was uh, producer Javier Chapa. He brought me uh, he brought me this movie. We had done Blue Miracle, another movie together uh, a couple years before, and uh, and he brought this to me. And, and at first, when he first brought it, I was actually a little bit resistant because it felt like maybe we had done some same genre, and then. When I really dug into the story, read the script, and, and found out the, what really happened, um, it just felt like something that I really wanted to explore. Uh, yeah, it was. It, I mean, it was. It was at the height of the George Floyd the, the conversations, and every, you know, everybody's talking about race, and and I felt like there was a lot of conversations about Black America, which was important, but we also had our own, we had our own things, you know, yes. Latinos. And, yes. uh, I thought it was also worth exploring, and, and so I, I I just I felt like I had to do it. Cheech. With the, with the caves the entire time? Talk to us about that. Well, well, that was the attraction, actually. <laughs> you want to work in the middle of the summer in Texas in a cage? Oh, yeah. I would do that. That sounds like a fun, you know? I think, I think in the middle of shooting that bench scene, it was like 3 in the morning, and he's going, man, I've done a lot of crazy shit in my life. <laughs> No, it was it was great. I mean, I got a call out of the blue that they because they had already been shooting for like six weeks or something like that. But when I joined in, like, okay, just show me my cage. And, I, <laughs> and uh, but everybody on the whole crew really helped a lot at, at, at various times, you know, because sometimes we were shooting late at night, sometimes early in the morning, and and I just I had I walked into a crew that had already been filming for six weeks. You know, you have a certain rhythm there that you've developed and worked out, so I was a new guy in there, so I think it was good that I wore a cage, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know, that kept me separated from everybody else, but it was, it was a cool part, you know? It's like, I, I don't think I'll ever get to wear a cage in a movie again. <laughs> you, know, so you, have, you have to take advantage of it. <laughs> Ali? Um, I mean, as soon as I read the script, and when I auditioned for it, I mean, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Latino stories are so important to me. I'm Mexican American, second generation, and and so like, also being from Texas, I'm from El Paso, Texas, and and so knowing that this this story is so close to home, and I didn't even know about it, and so I think it's so important to tell these stories, and there's so many out there, and I hope we continue we continue it. Same as money. No, um, it was 1950s, man. I'm obsessed with that with that era. I was obsessed with the wrong era, you know, with the, the, the colors and, and the furniture and the cars. I didn't know the, the darker side of it like that. And uh, when I saw that it was Mexican Americans, I had so much pride in being, well, I'm Mexican, I was born in Mexico. Um, but I had so much pride in that. And I had already seen uh, Blue Miracle. And yeah, I, I jumped on it quick. I, I turned in the audition within the hour and couldn't pass it up. Yeah. <laughs> For those in the audience that don't know, this is based on a book. Mustang Miracle, it's a true story. But to put you on the spot here, I know Paulina kind of already touched on this, but did you guys know this story beforehand? Or is this something you sort of learned about? No, I, I didn't know that, and, and it's kind of weird. Like, I, I also didn't, I didn't know the true story behind Blue Miracle, I didn't know about this one, and I'm realizing, I started to realize that there's a lot of, we have a lot of stories uh, from our culture that just don't, don't make it to the surface, they don't get publicized much, so. Um, so when you get a chance to actually bring one to screen, like, it's a real privilege. Cheech, did you know about the, the book? Did you know the story? I barely heard about golf in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's in the cage, okay, I'm in. You know, I'd never heard this story, but I, you know, it was, it was amazing that it, it was actual factual story that yeah. in the mid 50s. So it started a long time ago, you know. This, the, the one line that got me today when I was watching this is, well, we thought were, your team was Americans. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Just the not kind of Americans you wanted to think about, you know? <laughs> so that was interesting. And Julio, what went into the casting? Talk to us about the characters. And then, since this is based on a true story, how much input did, say, the real, the real people who lived this have on the film? Well, I mean, this is my second true story, and, and in both cases, you're kind of going off of source material. And this one, is, it happened so long ago that we, we were going off of Humberto's book. Like, Humberto really did his research, and he, uh, so that book was really the main thing. And then we had a, a script also that was written off of the book. And, um, and then, you know, you have to take, you have to take certain liberties, obviously, to try to, you know, make things dramatic. But, I mean, all the stuff where everybody's groaning and, like, they canceled the award ceremony and all that, that's all real. Like, I didn't have to make that stuff up. Like, so, so, the big dramatic points of stuff are, are, are real. But uh, as far as going into casting, I mean, we were really lucky, I think, that all of the people we cast are all, they're all respective stars of their own shows or they're busy working on movies all the time. And everybody was just happy to do these tiny, even, like, we had some, Big actors doing small roles, and you know, and uh, and so for whatever reason, people really resonate with the story, and, and I was able to get really great actors for all of my roles, you know. So um, it was well, you, I don't, you were. <laughs> <laughs> These guys made it so my job so easy. Like everybody asked me, what's it what's it like working with like, younger people, and and really like they're they're well, they're way easier than you. Like they're way way easier than you. Yeah, the young people are amazing. Like they're the, the enthusiasm that they bring for all of us. I mean, I. Because even me, I'm younger. I mean, I'm older than all my my cast, and, and so they, they just bring a level of energy and excitement to all of us. You just kind of can't help but get get pumped at two in the morning when they're still thrilled to be shooting. And I'm like, man, this is a long night. <laughs> so, so it was great. I mean, I had love working with all these guys. So. Uh, Cheech, let me ask you this: uh, We talked about the cage that you wore. I think if I read this correctly, you were. It was three days that you were shooting. Yeah, three days. Talk to us about your character, because even though it was a small role, it was a very pivotal one. One that he sort of ties everything together, right? Trying to inspire the boys. Yeah, he uh, you know, he, he was a World War One veteran, I think, in, in the original story. And he came back, you know, shell shocked as many of those guys did. And I've seen many people come back from my father, particularly, came back from World War Two, and. And they never liked to talk about it that way, you know. So he was kind of on his own, the first job he got when he came back uh, uh, to, the, to the United States after the war was he got hired at the golf course. And that fit him just fine because he could find a little corner to hide in with a cage and he didn't have to, you know, be involved in a lot of things he didn't want to be involved in. He could live in his own, his own world. So that was, that was an interesting part of it. But at the same time relating to these kids because he saw them play every day. He knew them. Julio, a lot was going on. This was 1950s segregation and racism. We saw it in the film. Is there any stories that you heard about or learned about that you wanted to maybe include in the film that just didn't make it for time? And, and this goes out to the cast as well. Is there anything you guys learned in the process of, of making the film? Well, you know, it's stuff like when you're making a story like this, there's some things. It was about the racism, the challenge of the 50s. There was some stuff, for example, that like, made the story even harder. Like, they, you know, like you learn stuff that like, uh, for example, the, the golf course was built around the spring in Del Rio. That, that's like the main water source and everybody in the town pays for water, but the, the golf course itself was, had like a $1.99 year deal to get free water. And so you have some stuff that made the situation seem worse than it was. But then you also had like, you also had lots of stories of really like a lot of white people that were giving them free gear and make, you know, giving them nice things. So I think in the end, like there was stuff that kind of Push the stories in both, in both directions, and I think we actually just focus in on the heart of stuff. That, that I think I think it ended up feeling like the right amount of, of conflict ultimately. So, but you probably you have stories in the fifties when you were in college. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was post college. I was going for my daughter at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you felt, especially in L.A., you felt that that segregation. Although it was a big city, you know, I lived in an all black neighborhood. And then I lived in an all-white neighborhood the next day. So one day everybody was black, and the next day everybody was white. You know? And I was just a little Chicano kid in the middle. I was, how do we go? You know, which way? So you you felt that that I felt that when I was, I, but I could observe the whole the whole thing from behind that cage. And that was a really interesting place to be, you know, because it separated you from everybody else, literally and figuratively. 
One of the scenes, and Christian, maybe you can answer this, one of the scenes that I found interesting was the scene in Mexico, right? Because um, they're in McAllen playing the golf tournament and the boys go out. But it's one of those things where you learn that they're not accepted in the U.S., and then they go to Mexico and they realize they're not accepted there either, right? So talk to us about that. Uh, well, I am from Mexico, and uh, I just been, I've been here since I was two years old. And I, in 2019, I, I visited Mexico for the first time since I've been back. And I felt that way. They just speak differently, but in, in some way you still feel judged by your own people. You know, and, and it, you gotta kind of find the balance in between on how to get accepted or, I, I, just, I just feel like you accept it more from your own people than from a different race. Cause you know, there's still times that I go to a restaurant or something and, and people look at you a certain way and you kind of do want to walk out. But if I go to a Mexican restaurant in Mexico and I don't speak the way they do, I'm like, well, fuck it, I'm still gonna eat, you know? <laughs> so I don't know, it's, you, you accept it more. Right. Yeah. But you gotta find the balance in there. And then, uh, only because I worked in McAllen, is that the Los Angeles Ferry that they were on, William? <laughs> the one there the... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There, there is, there is. No, I know, I know. It's based on a, it's that's a real thing. Yeah. yeah, no, but that's all. Yeah, that's not. I was just curious. Yeah, no, that's a Smith. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cheech, this next question goes out to you, and it's sort of uh, not necessarily having to do with the film, but you, you, you this is big for you. Uh, Chicano history, um, Chicano art. Um, you have a, a museum of sorts, right? Can you talk to us about that and just the importance of this film for you to be a part of it? Which part do you want me to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start with the museum. Talk to us about the museum. Oh, the museum. Yeah. Ah, the museum. Oh, yes. <laughs> Talk about the museum. <laughs> it's located in Riverside, California, so if you're ever in L.A. or anywhere in the vicinity, please come and see it. It's, it's the first Chicano museum. Uh, and it's predicated on a, a, a gift that I gave to the, the uh, Riverside Museum, which was the collection of Chicano art that I collected over 40, almost 50 years. And it's been a huge success because being the first, but uh, being what it is, and, and it drew everybody to there. We've been open for this is the start of our second year, and, and the first year we were voted one of the top 50 shows in the world. So, you know, it was the most. <laughs> and we're just going to keep being there until. Uh, uh, as long as everybody supports us. So we need your support. So we know, <laughs> come in down there, visit the museum, go to the website, see we, we change the shows all the time. So you're gonna get to see the whole f history of, of when Chicano art started and where it is now every day when you go into that museum. So please come down. Oh, yeah, you said you grew up in Texas. El Paso, is it? No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I was born in El Paso, Texas, and then, and then grew up in San Antonio. So, El Paso, border town, talk to us about being a part of this film. It takes place in Del Rio, which is a border town. Yeah. Um, I was in El Paso for like five years of my life, <laughs> but I, I have very fond memories of it. Um, we would go to Ciudad Juarez all the time. I have a lot of my family still there, and so I still go to visit to this day. Um, we were actually just there the other weekend. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool. Um, to be able to represent that in, in any way that I could um, and continue to, I hope to, yeah. Well, one thing, also I would say, I really appreciate the Paulina participating in the movie because it, she and, and Jaina, who played JB's wife, I think it's easier to make a movie like this, you kind of get caught up in the male uh, aspects of a sporting movie, but I think they, they also brought to like kind of a couple generations of what women were going through at the time and, and what I think I, hopefully what women still go through. And you know, hopefully these are all things that are universal, but, uh, but I, I think you guys brought a lot to help round out the movie that I'm, I'm really grateful for him. Yes. Um, this is... <laughs> it's a sports movie, but there's so much more that goes into right. it, right? Yeah, I, I don't really think of this as a golf movie. Um, I don't really like golf. I, <laughs> I also don't like fishing, which was my last movie. And so I think... <laughs> The thing is, it actually is like it's kind of an advantage because then is like I know that if I like it, then people won't like it just because it's about golf. Because you know, so I, so really like golf becomes yeah, it becomes a symbol of, of exclusion of of trying to break through into elite circles and things. But it also that's the dark side. Of it, but it's all, it also became a symbol of, of learning to grow and become an adult, a respect a respectable adult who 
actually knows when you're supposed to play by the rules versus when you're supposed to break them. And I, uh, so golf was a perfect metaphor for what these guys are going through. Uh, for anyone wondering if they want to watch the movie again, when will it be released to the masses? And then uh, the second part question for you, what's next for you? Uh, well, hope, I mean, probably there's going to be a rip version of this on YouTube at, at tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> but uh, beyond that, it'll be April 12th. Uh, it's going to be in theaters nationwide. And uh, what was the question? What's next for me? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I, I don't know. Whatever Javier tells me. <laughs> and I mean, some of your movies, you have some of the same guys. I guess you build a rapport. Some of the same actors. Is that something that uh, Christian and Paulina can look forward to? Yes. Cheech? Yes. I, I, hope, I hope so. Like you know, it's just it, man. You know, you get to a point in your life where you're just like. You just want to be around people who are cool, you know? You just want to like, you want to have fun at work, you want to, you, you want to build a rapport with people. And so, once you, when you finally find people that just kind of get your energy and, you know, because it, it, it's just hard to find, you know? People, film people are weird, man, we're, we're weird. Like, you know, so, so uh, I would love to work with all these guys again if, if they're willing to do it again for no money. Perfect, all right. And I think, I think the plan was to ask you guys a couple of questions and then open it up to the audience. Um, I don't know if we have some microphones for the audience or if, some folks just want to shout out some questions and we'll try to do our best. Do Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you all for this film. It, it, it was amazing. And um, yes, we have to support each other, the, co the community and the Latinos. And, you know, um, uh, y'all touched on everything, a lot of subjects. And, um, you know, we have to empower these kids to, you know, if there's something that they're really good at to help them with it, you know, and encourage them to and continue with it. And um, with the golf, a lot of our youth are getting into golf now, and that's a, this is a perfect timing for this to come out too, for them mm -hmm. to okay. keep going with it. So, but I want to thank y'all, and it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll try to keep it a question because our time is limited. I appreciate your ear, but um, any other questions? Go ahead. What did you learn from the movie? What did you learn from the movie? To, who, to all, the, all of us? Sure. You see, you got the mic in your hand. Uh, <laughs> to never lose hope and faith and, and keep pushing for something. And also having a lot of patience. Just like uh, on that last thing with Joe and, and, and Cox, where if Joe would have hit that guy, he would have been disqualified. Maybe there, was, there would have been no, no uh, championship. But he kept his cool, he kept his calm. You know? And he, and he knew his focus. And I think. To me, is that something that I'll, that I'll carry with me? The little things just kind of pull yeah. them out. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. First off, congratulations to all of you. Oh, you all did a phenomenal is. job. The film looked like a Kodak picture from the 50s. <laughs> and I wanted to ask all of you, uh, all of you are great in period pieces. Do you have any other projects that are also period pieces, like the 50s? No, we have another piece that uh, uh, Pauline and I worked on next. Oh, we're, yes. in, we're in this one. What, what is the name of that movie? Uh, it is long. It is Alexander and the Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Road Trip. Oh. I saw an article about it. They, wow. they did change the name. So. I yes. was the grandfather and she was the daughter. Awesome. Yeah. Right. I'm really proud of that. Anybody right. else? We'll get up there. I would say that uh, it's really the, the young actors that put great chemistry on the set. Uh, because you can see it in the screen, and I was wondering if you did any like uh, work beforehand to get them to, to to get to know themselves better. We hit the nightclub in Colombia the night before the shoot, <laughs> and we got to clean it there. But no, we I think right off the bat we met when we all met, we just clicked, man, and, and it just felt so natural, so real. Like we didn't have to put, make any extra effort. It was just so real. Yeah. And Julio, we talked about this just for folks so, so they know. The film wasn't actually filmed in Del Rio, right? Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, we looked into shooting in Del Rio. Uh, the problem was that we needed it to look, we needed to look at like the 50s and we didn't have a lot of money to fix things up and build sets. And so Del Rio has changed a lot in the last 70 years, but uh, Smithville, Texas is kind of a time capsule. It seems sort of stuck there. That they, and they've been really well maintained. And you know, so, so for the, the budget that we had, like it just made sense to go there and everywhere you look, it just looks like the 50s, yeah. So that's great. Cool. Anybody else? You. This question for Paulina. So, how many times did you have to climb the tower? Okay, so, <laughs> I wasn't actually allowed to climb the tower. <laughs> 
um, safety reasons, you know. Um, but I remember that little clip where I'm actually climbing that little tiny section. Um, Julio was like, stop climbing it so fast. She was, and she was gonna do it. Like all I was of us were, like, I was, I was nervous. And she was like, I'll do it. And she's wearing like yeah. weird looking bowling shoes. Like they're all sweaty. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I, I was ready, but um, no, everything was very safe and, and whatnot. And, and, and it felt really, it was a lot, it was fun. That day was a lot of fun. Yeah, everybody thought it was crazy when I picked that location. Javier was like, what are you, can't they just say like, go to a park bench and have some ice cream or something? <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. Okay. Given how much you've experienced and seen in the industry and in your lifetime, so much in America has changed for Mexican Americans, yet sometimes it still feels like we're still stuck in yeah. the same place. What advice do you have for the younger generation of Mexican Americans coming up? Uh, just keep working. Whenever you get a chance to do it, do it. And especially for actors, I'm talking specifically about actors uh, or, or filmmakers or anything. It's because making a film requires a lot of people. It's not like you're going out and playing, you know, racquetball against the wall or something. You know, it's, it's it requires a lot of people, and you have to hand it off to those people many times during the process of the filming. So you get to learn how to work in a group. Uh, and, and, and to work cooperatively. Film is the most cooperative medium that there is. You know, it's not like a painter does it by himself, a writer does it by himself. To make a movie, you need 30, 50 people. And so, what the lesson you learn is, uh, uh, is how to work with other people, and you see it manifested every time you turn on the TV right now. There's somebody Latino in that cast. And some of the biggest stars in America are Latino. So, you know, it's, it's changed a lot from when I was first in the business where, oh, you're opening doors, or you're the first ones to do this, but I'm not the first one anymore. There's a lot of people, you can't, you know, it's, it's, it's of, all the, of all the lines of work that you can get into, film is a really open uh, possibility right now. So, you know, it's, it's Having that repetition of, of, of images in front of you—that is, you get used to it. Used to these, this is the face of America too, and uh, and it's uh, you know it takes a long time. It doesn't happen overnight, but you see many stars coming up right now, especially female stars, you know, because they're better looking. <laughs> I, also, I, you know, I, I want to say I think this is it's a really important thing that I, I kind of wanted to people to pull out of this movie because when you look at what these young guys went through in the fifties, it. it it really puts into perspective some of the things, the challenges that we face, and, and sometimes the excuses we can make for ourselves. And like, we, we all have challenges, we all have obstacles, but the, the thing is, guys like this didn't make any excuses, they just went out and did it. And so I think we have an obligation to just, no excuses, do the best you can, face the, face the challenges, and, and if they can do it, then you know, we have an obligation to, to build on the, the, door, the, the path that they've built for us. You know? Go ahead, up in the back. I know that the cage has become a little bit more of a comical thing right now, but did you intend for the cage to signify that we can exist outside of that cage and there's something better out there? Um, as a really strong message. Uh, I just was in the cage, I didn't write the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I remember when I, was, when I was doing research for the movie, I, I, I was looking at 1950s photos and I saw a picture of a guy, and it wasn't a Mexican guy, it was just a caddy wearing that cage. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, man, this is, like, that's the perfect metaphor for this guy of that generation, that he's, you know, he's just trying to hide. And I, and you can, I think the, the, the multi-generational aspect of this movie was really important to me because even back then you could see the difference between his character's point of view, you know, just trying to lay low, not cause any waves. JB's trying to get in, he's trying to become a golfer, but be super nice about it. And Joe's like, ready to fight to get it. You know, so you can see the, the evolution of the, the approaches over the generations. And, and I, same thing with the, the, the women and, and you know, they, they, two different generations had kind of two different life goals, you know, and so uh, the cage for me was 100%, it was like, this guy's just trying to be invisible. You know, that's what, he, that's what he's doing. Uh, and he's he's being subversive and, and making his little way in the corner of the uh, until the next generation can can take it a step further. Yeah. Before we take the last question, and I'll get to you in just a second. I guess uh, let me ask you this: uh, 
the golf course or, or the makeshift, make, makeshift golf course that they sort of created, is that something that uh, you learned about through talking to these guys, or is that something that was um, you put in the film? No, 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 that was pivotal to the movie. That, that's what they really did. Like, they, uh, they did that in Del Rio, they made their own course, and that for, I think for Javier as well, like, that was the main appeal of the movie, was that these guys, they were not allowed to do, I mean, that's like, that's indie filmmaking. Like, we're here, we're, we didn't make this movie with Sony or Paramount or anybody. Like, we made this movie, we built a course in the middle of a field, and now we're here, you know, showing you guys what we did. So, for us, it was a, it was a very important part of the story that they, these guys actually did that, because that's what I'm saying, like, we, you may not be an industry insider, we don't have the Hollywood connections and all that, but we can still go out and make our own way, and, and that's what these guys did. So that was pivotal to, to us doing the movie. All right, last question. Yes, ma'am. Gene Vasquez was my grandpa, and I think it's really important how you mentioned like the multi-generational aspect. The golf course that I grew up learning how to play golf on from my grandpa is the same golf course that when he was my age, he wasn't allowed to play at. He snuck onto the course and I this film has specifically made me and my cousin who played for the Del Rio golf team which little history lesson there was Del Rio and there was San Felipe Del Rio was for the white kids and San Felipe was for the Mexicans and now it's consolidated so I had the opportunity to play for Del Rio and I think it's put a lot into perspective for myself and my family and realizing like I took for granted a lot of the golf experience I had growing up the golf course was somewhere I got to go every single day after school. I have some of the best memories made on San Felipe Golf Course. And I didn't realize necessarily at that point that I was taking that for granted as a Mexican-American female. And that was somewhere where my grandfather was not allowed to go on a daily basis. He snuck onto that course. And I think I have a very cool perspective and opportunity in the sense of when I was learning how to play golf, my grandpa would say like, I know how to play these holes. You're just not listening to me. <laughs> and in reality, you did. And I thank y'all so much. Like, Del Rio is going to cherish this movie for years. Like, I can't wait to show my grandkids this movie in the sense that I got to play for that same team. So thank y'all so much from the Vasquez family, from Del Rio. Like, we are going to coming tonight. That concludes the show. That concludes the question Q&A. Thank you. One more uh, final round of applause, please. Woo!